Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. episode 137 we are back uh took a little bit of break away a little summer break but we're back here dexter henry brian fonseca still doing the safe and responsible thing staying at home when we go out wear a mask unlike people of other parts of this country uh, <clears throat> you see the numbers going up um so we hope everybody that's listening is is safe and well and healthy brian how you doing man working out taking my vitamins you know what i'm saying i'm good i i uh the the week off was well for the week off from the pod at least not a total week off for either of us but the week off from the pod I was able to be really really productive with some other stuff that I'll talk about when the time is right but uh, people should just know that I'm not just out here just doing one or two like there's there's some stuff coming later on hopefully later on in the year but we'll we'll get to that when when the time is right but you know working on that and just surviving and advancing. Like March Madness. Survive in advance like March Madness. All, all we can do. All right, so this episode, we this is something Ryan and I talked about before we took a break. That yeah. I feel, I'm laughing because um, this is something I know we both have wanted to talk about. We are kind of in agreement on a lot of these things, but it will bring different things to the table in terms of this episode. Um, for pe- people who are fans of this podcast, you will know, and this is a Brianism, I will say. <laughs> Not necessarily a, a Dexterism, but a Brianism. That Brian, which I agree with Brian on this. I want to be clear about this. True, a lot of people get rooted in tradition, right, and holding on to tradition. I want to make a disclaimer here. We are not saying that traditions, in its totality, are stupid, but we think the idea of holding on to traditions without ever questioning them, I think that's stupid. Right? At least I'll put my name on that. I think that's stupid. Right. And often in sports, there are a lot of things that are traditional. We've talked about some of this in this podcast with baseball. We talked about it with some stuff. But Brian and I had a conversation off the pod where we were just talking about stuff that we know around sports that people just continue to do or won't let go of that we think are absolutely stupid. And we're going to talk about on on this podcast. We're going to talk about those things and we invite you guys to interact after you've listened to this or tell us what you think is or things you think that should change. This isn't really about rule change or rule changes, although some of this will be about this. This is also just about uh, notions of how things should go in a sport and other ideals around it. So am I, am I, am I allowed to nominate ESPN suspending woes, even though I think that he shouldn't have been because that's the tradition of the establishment working as the establishment, but I don't think they have to, especially in that case. Ooh, see, that's one we're going to slightly... We can just, let that one go. We, we can, can let, let that, that one, one go. Right I don't there. think that one's there. I, you know, like, I I just... I don't, I don't, I don't think, think... Certain people should get suspended for saying things to certain people that is warranted. That's but I don't... All. But see, that's the thing. I don't think that's why he got suspended, right? Like, he got... No, either. He got suspended because of money. No, nah, not even that. I think he got suspended because no employee, you can't have your employee say F you to somebody else. Not saying that the F you wasn't to warranted. That dude. It, yeah, but but that but dude but it's it. but it's not about that, right? It, it's it's that. But that's th- but that's what I'm saying. That's the traditional thinking of like it's not about that. Where I'm like, fuck that. It should be. It shouldn't be about that. You, but, you know but, what I mean? Like we we should change the way we think about. But the things. but the thing is. They're gonna look at it as like if you if you can't have your talent, your talent has to have a level of professionalism. So you can't. It's not now, about. It's, now though, it's not. I, I, I don't think now professionalism. You need. I think have. all I'm saying is when like I say pro- when, dying, when I say I'm professionalism, saying? what I'm saying is you can say the f you without saying f you. I had to tell. I'm. I'm gonna share this story right now. This happened. This happened literally the night before we recorded this. I'm gonna share this. Somebody 
on my employer's Facebook page where they posted one of my stories came at me in a certain way and saying there's something I said about one of these stories. And I'll tell you what the story is uh, off here, Brian. But one of the, something about the stories was a lie. Because you know everybody now that's on the side of things wants to say it's lies or fake news when it doesn't fit their historical narrative. So my problem with that is you can call something a lie. You can say whatever you want about it if you feel it's fake news, whatever. But don't say that about my work when I know I did the research and I did my fact checking. Now you're coming at journalists doing good work, and I don't stand for that. So yeah. I had to clap back a little bit at this person, right? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. You know what I wanted to say? Exactly what Wode said. I wanted to say exactly what Wode said in two words. But I understand that that will not be necessarily a professional way. So I found a professional way to basically say what Wode said, which was a little bit longer. That's Woj's only transgression here. It's well, not about what he said. It's sometimes it does matter how you say something. And that matters too. And that's that's the reason I think he got suspended. Now He did it in a private email too. I think we should point that out. Yeah, but, like it was, but it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, I know and, what you mean. Like he should have thought that this might go public or whatever, but in that moment he didn't care because Hawley is such a dick. Understood. But you got to understand in this snitching culture, this screenshot culture, this people trying to ruin this people. butt hurt culture. Yeah, that too. That you got to think about that. And I don't think Woj necessarily thought about that. Now, here's where I give Woj credit. And I know we're going to we're getting off on tangent, but I'm glad we're talking about this. This is where I give Woj credit, Brian. Did you see Woj's apology? You know what I love that Woj did? Woj didn't apologize for what he said. He apologized yeah. for how it might have hurt his employer or his colleagues. Those yeah. are two different things. And he yeah. apologized exactly the way I thought he should apologize. Yes, what he said was unprofessional in terms of how it relates to working for ESPN. Is what he said wrong? No. No, 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 no. And so I had no problem with his apology because I think he handled the apology A-OK. Woj is going to be fine. ESPN, is, wouldn't, ESPN wouldn't get rid of Roach because they need Woj. Woj don't necessarily right. need ESPN, and because I think that's another this, fair point. This was my point on this was my point on Twitter that I saw some other people sort of piggyback off of, and then got more attention for it because they have more followers. But this is my point on Twitter because uh, Woj could really just go out on his own, make his own vertical, and bring in some people and yeah. profit off that, and keep the profits and do it his own way because he's still Woj. He's still gonna break the news. What's ESPN going to do if he leaves? Right. They're going to promote somebody who's probably not ready to be Woj. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. They're right. Like, but here's, here's, here's the thing. People, but people think that at the end of the day, it's like, yo, the company, like no one's bigger than the brand, whatever, whatever. I'm like, it's 2020. Well, this that well, see, those different. It's different. That's a different argument. I don't agree with that. There are people bigger right. than the brand. What right. I am saying, though, is what I will say, though, is there's free, freedom of speech has its limits. Right. Even within working for corporations. So you have to be careful about how you say. I do think now is the time to call out people like Senator Hawley. I do think now is the time to call out like the dude who tried to attack my journalism story. And like if my company comes and says to me, well, you could have ignored that and you could not say anything to him. I'm going to be like, no, he's coming at my work and what I'm doing. So if you come at my work and my profession and what my name is next to that, no, I am coming back for you in a professional manner, right? Because trust me, I wanted to say exactly what Woj said. I, it's not about what, it's not about Woj's response to what he said. It's the delivery of how it, because had he wrote to Senator Hawley, had he said, you know what, Senator Hawley, your, word, your, your words are not helpful here. Your words are absolutely, I was about to say something else that was mean. I was trying to, <laughs> trying to clean it up right here. Yeah, you, you, your words are just more divisive than anything. And you know what? I'm somebody, I'm speaking as if I'm woke, I'm somebody who liked Daryl Morey's tweet back when it had a thing with China and actually lost a show that was running on tennis set. So technically, if you look at Woj, Woj just kind of put his money where his mouth is. And he's he is lost from stuff that has happened between Chinese and NBA relations. So for this guy to come in and say the tweet he did and act like the NBA is not being all-encompassing and coming in some All Lives Matter bullshit, I understand why his um, um, you know emotion here was, F you. I get that. He deserved an F you. I just think Woj had to be better about how he said the F you. That's all. 
I think I think. Am I mad about Will Say Nephew? No, I'm not mad about it. A lot, a lot of people want to normalize a lot of things. A lot of things these days. Like I go on Twitter and see people wanting to normalize a lot of things. I think we should normalize. Uh, fuck you to people who deserve them. Wow. Without without repercussions. Wow. Like, Honestly, because at the end of the day, what's ha- this is well, this is one of my points on Twitter too, and people may think this is a joke, but seriously, what's Holly gonna do? Is he gonna run up on Woj? No, you know what I'm saying? no, no. no. The- but, but, but the only like, don't, like like yo, what are we talking about? But the only the only recourse he like, has it's not, gonna, it's not gonna escalate to to this level. Like you know, everyone's like, oh, we gotta protect ourselves. Like, what's he here? Does he have a hitter that I don't know? About? The only thing he can do is do what he did, which is expose it to the media, right? And know th- and know but that. We, but this is why I'm saying more people need to get punched in the face because a lot of people can move in certain ways and think that there are no repercussions for it. And a lot of people that are powerful have never had altercations because they've grown up and been born into wealth and whatever the case may be, and they've never been punched in their face. A lot of people need to get fucking punched in their face. But here's the thing. You if they say- get punched in their face, then they would know that there are repercussions to the things that they say and do. You're Period. saying you're saying this as though as though I actually think Woj saying F you to him and this blowing up in the way it does only makes Senator Hawley look bad. I've been saying this throughout the I'm thinking about. Th- I'm saying in general because if Hawley's ever been punched in the face, he wouldn't have gone at Wolves the way. Whoa, he did well, but here's the thing. Or the NBA, rather. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is what we're talking about with white supremacy in this country and and dismantling it. Right. A lot of times, to to your point, which I agree with to some degree, a lot of times the people that have gotten to this place is because nobody has checked them. I completely yeah. agree with that. Absolutely, yeah. positively agree with that. And so. Sometimes when you have the checking, I do think there's a checking in a better way than saying F you to things all the time. There's a professional way to say F you that can still get the message across and do it. That's kind of my only point here. I'm not disagreeing with you on the fact that you kind of got to tell these people to have several seats and shut the hell up. I agree with all that. I'm agreeing with that. The, the, the reason Senator Hall even thought he could do that and make a quote unquote power play in his mind is because nobody checked him. I don't disagree with you one bit on that. You're 100% right. I think today, and we talked about this a little bit before in the podcast last month, it's a new day, Brian. People are going to get caught. People like Woj, ain't, nobody's got time for it. I didn't have time for the person that made the comment on the Facebook page, right? But I understand there's a way in which I have to move. Now, this is why I say to people all the time, you want the freedom to say whatever you want to say and you want to say F you to somebody, you know where you can do that? And it goes to the point you're making earlier, on your own platform. Because you know yeah. what we can say to Senator Hawley on this platform? F you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Now I might not be able to say that on something else, but we can say that. And this is the freedom and power in having it and having your own platform. Now, what I will say though, I do think is, and I want to be clear about traditions, and I think this ties in to a little what you're saying. Journalists in journalism right now, we have to call a thing a thing. Word to Ayana Valzan. We have to call a thing a thing. We have to call things out. If something's racist, let's call it out. If something's sexist, we gotta call it out. If something's yeah. homophobic, we got to call it out. And I'm all about that. Please, let's do that. But understand, if you're working for other platforms, you're going to have to do that in a professional manner. If you have to defend yourself as a journalist, I see nothing wrong with anybody doing that. You're not just supposed to sit back and be quiet and let people just say whatever they want to say about your work. If You know what I, You know what Woj could have done? Woj could have exposed this dude's email. It's funny. What if it went that way? I wonder what if it went the other way? What if Woj had tweeted out his email that he sent to the screenshot that I wonder how that would have played. Oh, well, you know how the other side would have yeah. played. Yeah. I, I just I, I, I think I, I don't know. Maybe I think professionalism is a little overrated. Maybe. No, maybe, I just maybe no, that's, professional, because, professionalism because is necessary. I, I, I just think that I'm not saying that it's it's bad like yeah, yes, we all need some level of professionalism. I'm just saying in the times we're we're in, <laughs> that's just not always gonna be an option. There's a way to be direct and harsh without having a you know, use profanity. That's kind of what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Listen, in non-professional just settings... Don't, just, don't, just don't be like old school Hispanic parents where you can tell them a monologue about a bunch of different things that are wrong and all they're <laughs> going to focus on is how many times you curse. They used to hate with my mom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand that. I understand that. It's not it's because people lose the message, but sometimes I think... Yeah. But I'm, it's like, oh, the words are just words at the end of the day. No, words have me words have meanings and No, but what I'm it. saying is like just because one thing is a curse and one thing is not doesn't make the curse invalid. No, I don't think it does. I, clearly the curse is valid here, right? Otherwise we wouldn't yeah. be talking about the levels of yeah. professionalism. But yeah. I do think 
that's Woj's only mistake. There's nothing in what he said. And I think that there's a lot of people like us that support what he said. I just understand the suspension was about the eyes or the looking of professionalism. I don't think it necessarily has to do with what it said because honestly, ESPN is not even protecting anything in that. Now, the traditional talk about here to tie this in, I'm with Brian. Carry on the, carrying on the tradition of not clapping back because you think that's wrong, I'm not here for. Right. There has to be professionalism, but nowadays, you got to call these people out. It's plain, yeah. plain and simple. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. To the sports and the things that we think I'm gonna let Brian kick this off because I know he's got a bunch of stuff. Uh, Brian, what is your, what is something you think that we gotta get all the way up out of here that is done in sports? We don't need to carry on this tradition anymore. Give me one that you think that needs to get all the way up out of here. Do you want the really obvious one, or do you want a a, a different a different one? I, I have probably. a feeling the obvious one might not be so obvious to some people. So give oh, me the, that. the obvious one is just stop playing the damn national anthem before every sporting event it's huh. it's one it's one of the dumbest things we do in sports like we're so prideful in our country and this flag and this stupid song that we make everyone stand in whatever center court or the pitch or hockey rink or whatever and we play the national anthem before like the performances some of them are good like before a fight or whatever the case may be but for me it's more about what that song and what that flag currently represents and how it really resonates with a certain section of people more than it does for a lot of other people, we need to get rid of it because I think the flag alone has become very divisive and a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that. Never mind the fact that the song is racist. If you just like do your research on that part. Right. And still making people sing to it and listen to it and things like that. They used to make us do the Pledge of Allegiance in school before because, you know, 9-11 had happened and then we had to say it all the time on the loudspeaker with the principal or the assistant principal, uh, you know, reading it and we would follow along and I used to hate that shit. I never wanted to get out of my seat. The shit was dumb. There were kids that used to salute after and like, I understand because it was post 9-11 and that was a different time but like, even then, I was like, yo, why are we doing this? Why can't we just like, you know, get on with like what we were doing? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why are we literally staying here for, I don't know, 45 seconds or a minute doing this little routine and then starting our event and then people get mad at other people for taking a knee or not really acknowledging mm -hmm. what's going on where if you go to a football stadium people aren't running out and getting getting by their seats and standing be like yo i gotta be here for the anthem no if they're in a, a line for hot dogs they're getting their hot dogs if they right. want to get pretzels they're getting their pretzels right i've always made this point so i guess my saying? issue i guess my issue is not ever with if they want to play the anthem, whatever. My issue more is with people acting like they need to tell people what they should do when the anthem is being played. And I've said this before in this podcast, when most of y'all, to the point that Brian brings up, most people during the anthem are not standing and paying attention to the anthem, but then they want to make it so serious. So I think there's a lot of hypocrisy around it. I wish people would just stop the tradition of the hypocrisy around it and telling people what they have to do. If Brian wants to sit through next to through the national anthem, if somebody Which I've wants done. to if somebody wants to done. do jumping jacks during the national anthem, if somebody <laughs> wants to roll around, who gives a damn? Because most of y'all ain't consistent on this national anthem thing all the time. And it means different things to different people. And I think one last thing I'll say is I think people hide behind the patriotism yeah. to covert uh, cover other things and other feelings they behind. And when somebody is challenging something within America or a system – you're then deemed not patriotic. And the problem with it during sports is the playing of the national anthem, why I think it continues, Brian, is because of the paid patriotism that has been pumped into sports. And there's been so much paid patriotism in the sports, you're never, that's not going to go away. When you could pay for these F-15 flyovers over stadiums and all this yeah. other stuff, there's so much paid and so much money between the military and sports. Uh, that, sadly, until you take that apart, it's not going away. That's what I have a problem with. And 
remember, this became a thing when we were working at St. Francis. Um, because Colin Kaepernick had started. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about that thing. I see it in your face. You're like, oh, is he going <laughs> to... No, I don't care. <laughs> no, because I'm like, I'm... Because it's, it's coming to me now. I remember Colin Kaepernick first took a knee. I think it was 2016. That was around the time where I had started working there as an assistant SID. And I was already under the mindset, like, yo, this is stupid. Why are we listening to this before games or whatever? Well, even when I was at SID, they would play the national anthems at games, whether we were at home or at different arenas. What would mm-hmm. I do? I would always go to the bathroom or go to my office. That's what I would do. And I was like, I'm like, like, I'm just not doing this. And I remember one time somebody pulled me aside because they were like, because uh, I was in my seat. I was working on something in my seat. They were playing. Everybody was standing for the national anthem. The woman told me to get up, and the woman was a higher up in the company. I'm not going to say who she is because she's an awesome fucking person. This was just one instance. And she uh, was like, you know, I noticed that you – she pulled me into her office one day. I noticed that you don't like standing for the national anthem. I was like – because that – like I was just basically explaining all the stuff that I'm explaining now. It's dumb, whatever, whatever. Like what are we – like, what are we doing this for? What's the point? Why can't we just start the game? Like, it doesn't, it, does, it gives people a false sense of unity when we're not really unified in anything. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just a ceremony for, like, the sake of being a ceremony. And, you know, we just had a productive back and forth about that. She knew where I stood, and I was just like, yo, this is, this is dumb. Like, period. Like, I'm not going to be out here taking a knee or whatever the case may be. Y'all just not going to see me, and I'm going to come out of the bathroom when it's over, and I'm going to be ready to work. That's it. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Well, I, I also think it's problematic that you even feel like you got to move from the space because somebody will say something, and I think that's part of it, right? Somebody will say something about it, so you don't even want to be annoyed by their annoyance. So somebody, yeah. so you have to move from the space. You should be able to do whatever the hell you want to do, as I said before, during the national anthem, and all you people who act like you have to stand to do all this stuff, y'all don't care about it. You're lying. You're lying because if so. Every time you're at a sporting event, you would turn around to those concession stands and say, hey, people, don't buy that hot dog. Get back in here and stand and look at that flag. And you know yeah. you don't do that. So stop it. Like, just just, just stop it. What a, if people want to play the national anthem, I don't have a big problem with it. Do I think it's fair to question why we still do it? Yeah, absolutely. That's we should question fair. why we still do it. I know why it started. I know the history behind why it started. I know why it started in World War II. And when the troops were away and people did it as a symbolism with uh, baseball games and stuff still going on back home, people still played them. And a lot of women, when their husbands were at war, wanted to salute them. Somewhere. I get all that. I get all that. But you know what? Now, even, that, so even at that time, I want to point something out. Even at that time, hmm. as a, a symbol, if you want to say, through a song and a flag that was supposed to be all this unity, please remember, at that time during World War II, there were black men going over to fight that war and then came back to a country that was supposed to be united and then could not have the same freedoms as their white brothers and sisters when they came back on the soil. So that when you think about stuff like that, then you should ask yourself what Brian is questioning and up to the point I thought you brought up, which is this flag gives a false sense of unity. I couldn't yeah. agree more. If there's ever an example from its origin that it's always been a false sense of unity, and that's it. Maybe it's time to revise the actual national anthem. Maybe it's time to revise some of that stuff and actually have it fit. And you have to understand why for some people, especially black and brown folks in this country, why the national anthem does not mean the same thing as us. Because y'all been lying to us all this time. So pretty much for a lot of people into their tradition, they're like, F that. And I get it. I, I, I get it. All right. That's a good one. That is obvious. Many, a lot of people might not agree with it, but whatever. Um... For me, all right, here we go. I have a bunch to choose from, so I don't even know where to go. I, okay, I'm going to tell you, this, this This is one that bugs me the most. I can't stand it. I remember we talked on the phone. You didn't know what I was going to get because we talked to It's my favorite sport, which is basketball. And we were like, oh, man, where are we going to go with it? He's like, what don't you like in basketball? This really has to do with basketball. It's not on the NBA level. It's on the high school and collegiate level. I can't stand, I can't stand the possession arrow. The possession arrow is awful. You can't tell me if two people are hustling for a ball that, and I tie somebody up, that then the person who has uh, what is it, less fouls, less team fouls, yeah. gets gets the gets the ball. I don't get to jump up for it like it does in the NBA. I love whoever took the ball out last. La- doesn't no. get it the next time. It just alternates from there on. It's whack. Like it's absolutely whack. You're not rewarding hustle in the NBA. You reward hustle. Even if it's somebody 5'3", against somebody 7 foot, like they're going to jump it up, 
and you never know what could happen. Somebody could back tap it the wrong way. There can be more effort for it. There's there's an actual play, and you you stop the game. And it, it's 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 a nice reward for hustle. In high school and college, the possession arrow is just whack. You you could be a seven two dude down on the floor to against a six five dude hustle for the ball in a critical situation of the game, and it's like oh you got more team fouls. Nah, y'all don't y'all, y'all don't get the ball. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, you don't have a chance to get the ball. Like, why are we still doing this? And then why? I, this is fair to question. I know this is going to probably another point Brian will have about college basketball. Why are we showing kids how to play the game one way in terms of high school and college, only to if they get in the NBA to then take away this rule? This right? is leading into my next one. <laughs> so I, 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 I don't understand it. Like, why are we doing this? I don't think anybody can have a – I would like somebody to give me a good argument for why the possession arrow still exists. Right. Like in the age of where you're playing with shot clocks and most uh, at least high schools or some high schools and some levels still don't play with shot clocks. But most even high schools now are playing with shot clocks. Why are we still having a possession arrow? It's like you're getting limited possessions. You're not holding the balls as much as you used to without shot clocks. So possession arrow, let's get that all the way out of here. Yeah. And it leads me to my next one, because I generally think that it's problematic that we're teaching kids Too many different things, right? In high school, you're playing a certain way. College, you're playing a certain way. And then in the pros, not the NBA, the pros, you're playing another way, right? And in college basketball, the I think I think you should just have universal jump ball. To your point, like I think at the very least, instead of the possession arrow, if you're not gonna just give the team the ball, whatever the case, because it's a 50-50, and instead, if if it's an actual jump ball, make them jump for the ball. Don't just be like, jump ball, point this way because the other team is going that way all of a sudden. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't like that. And in college basketball, I don't like that there are 20-minute halves. I hate it. In men's college basketball specifically, because in women's college basketball, it has been 10-minute quarters for a few seasons now, and I like that they're actually thinking progressively. Look, when you watch international basketball even, it's four 10-minute quarters. In high school, it's eight-minute uh, quarters. I think in certain some AAUs, it'll be nine-minute uh, quarters. But in college basketball, we're doing 20-minute halves, which also leads me to – Why are there only five fouls if that's going to be the case? Because the percentage of fouling out is the same. Getting five fouls in 40 minutes, you have the same probability mathematically as six fouls in 48 minutes. College basketball is college. You should have them get six fouls instead because these guys are not professionals for that reason. Mm -hmm. But the halves thing is stupid. 20-minute halves, that's harder than four 12 or 10 or eight-minute quarters. Because now... If you get two fouls like Roy Hibbert did against Greg Oden in the Final Four in 2007, and we've seen so many other examples of this, but if you get two fouls and then you're out with 15 minutes and 30 seconds left in the game, you're done for the whole first half. Yeah, right. You can't come back in. And then if you come back in with a few minutes left, then you get whistled for another call. Guess what? You have three fouls heading into the second half where there's 20 more minutes and you can't do anything and it's like it's a combination of things there shouldn't be 20 minute halves because no one else does that let's just make it four 10 minute quarters and on top of that six fouls in college basketball in high school you could leave it at five because the games are so short like if you foul out in high school you got a problem and that's right. happened to me before so. you know what you know what you made me think of and i didn't write it on my list here and i don't think i discussed this with you that's but why, that's why we're here yeah i you, you talked about that the difference and how women the women's game in college basketball has moved over to Four eight minute quarters, um, and so you know I've liked that four, too. Ten minute four quarters ten minute quarters. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry, yeah. four ten minute quarters, which is interesting, right? Which made me think about something. You have four ten minute quarters, forty minutes, two twenty minute halves, still forty minutes, right? There is no difference in the time between the men and the women playing. It's another, and this was this was set up my point. Another example: when you play soccer, whether it's men's soccer plays ninety minutes. We'll get to soccer in a second too. Oh. Uh, women's soccer plays ninety minutes. But there's a sport that I feel like has leaned in and has gotten away without being called out on a sexism for quite some time. And that sport is tennis. Why do women in tennis only play three sets? Why? Like, tell me, why does that still exist? Here's the thing. Let me say this, though. I actually think that, and I prefer women's tennis than men's tennis because it's three sets. I would actually like the men to drop down to three sets instead, I mean, of, instead of the women going up to it's five. It's interesting. I like three set tennis better. I'm <laughs> fine. I'm fine with that if you want that. 
Like I, I'd be totally fine you want with it that. To be equal. Yeah. I just want it to be equal. Either move the women up to five or move the men down to three. Right? Yeah. What, what do you tell if if women can play ninety minutes of soccer, equally the same as men? Right? If women in college can play forty minutes of basketball, equally the same as men, why do you have the sets different? And that is a sport that is old. It is long term, and you let, with a lot of these sports that don't want to change, it'll be it's old. It's been extremely white and not as uh, inclusive, shall we say. You'll see a theme here. These are the people and things that want to carry on these traditions, right? And so you have this, and I'm sometimes I looked at it and said, well, you know, a Serena match I'm watching, it goes, it's best of three, and Brian said he likes the best of three, and that's fine. But sometimes I'll be like, damn, that was short. And then, then people laud these five set the John Isner, Isner matches. Yeah. The law that is being so great. I'm like, yo, the women could do that. Why can't yeah. the women do that? Uh, or or why can't the men come down to three and we just have best of three and it flows quicker and it's more moving as to, in terms of the sport. Why can't we do that? Either or. I just think the bias between it is absolutely ridiculous. I'm surprised from women there hasn't been more of a cry for this, right? And you also think might, about they it. They might like the three sets. They no. might, they might, but you know what else they would like? They might like to get paid a little bit more because there, there is, there has been historically some differences at certain tournaments in the payout because of that, right? But if you made it equal, now you then have to pay the women just as equally as you pay the men, which is how it should be anyway. The fact that we're discussing that is ridiculous, right? And yeah. there, there have been Billie Jean King, Serena, other people have been fighting for that, but I think a, a huge way to get rid of all of that is stop the difference in sets. Even in golf, it's not like they say, yes, you have different uh, tee, uh, tee off lengths that you'll have. You don't, you don't start at the same place just because of biology, but it's not like they say, Hey ladies, you can only play nine holes, not 18 holes. That would be yeah. ridiculous, right? There's nothing that's different about the court in tennis. So why are we changing the potential length of the matches for women as opposed to men? Dumb tradition. Let's get rid of that. What do they do? I actually don't know the question or the answer to this. What do they do in mixed doubles? Is it three sets? That's a good. That's a good question. Um, I nobody think, really watches mixed doubles like that. So that's I probably think why it doesn't really. I think it's three sets. You it know, probably is that because be because the women are playing. Idiots! I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm rolling my eyes by saying that. Um, <laughs> I, but it's it's it's. I I would like to see the men come down. But that's not going to happen. So I think, yeah, you should just make the women play two more sets and pay them more to do so. You know yeah. what I mean? Pay them more for their work and doing so. I just like three-set tennis because, you know, it's just like you just want to be in and out sometimes. And I'll be mm -hmm. very entertained. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, when I covered the U.S. Open, for example, friend of the show, Gerard Hector, he's with me a lot when we're, when we're at the U.S. Open and stuff like that. And he'll ask me if I'm going to see certain tennis matches. He's more of a tennis guy than I am. I'll usually go out if it's like Naomi Osaka, Madison Keys, because I'm like, oh, three sets. It'll be a great matchup because they're both two of the best players in the world. And then I'm out of there. But if you're asking me if I want to see Rafael Nadal and Gail Monfi, I want to. But at the same time, it's like, damn, how long am I going to be out there, though? You know, it's 88 degrees. You know what I'm saying? Like, I start weighing in all those things. But if it's just if you're just giving me three sets and I'm in and I'm out, I'm good. I can keep it moving. And it's, and I could just, you know, go on to the next thing I want to do. So I just prefer women's tennis in that regard. I'm not here. And maybe it's because I'm also not a tennis head like that. Like, tennis is not one of my top, top favorite sports, although I really enjoy it and have right. enjoyed it for the last few years. It's not something where it's like I'll sit and uh, very attentively watch five sets of men playing tennis. It's just just doesn't resonate with me like I th that. I think for me it depends on the stakes. If it's like, you know, a semifinal championship match, I'll watch it. I'll, yeah, I'll that, be really into different. it. Yeah. Um, and in I, general. I, I can appreciate the longevity of it. I just don't understand the bias. That's just it for me. Like, if if it was if the women started playing five, cool, whatever. Don't you you're probably gonna get more times you'll probably get the better player winning a best of five than the upsets you can see in a best of three. Um in terms of sets, I would I would agree with that. So why shouldn't the women have that chance? You 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 kinda put the women, even though I agree with you that it's a more exciting, you put the women at more uh there's more upsets in women's tennis, and I think it's because of that. You know, anything yeah. can happen in one set. So yeah. You know, where I think the men's game, you see less upsets because of that. Either, like you said, bring it down or, or, or bring it up.
The Sports Walk is back. Watch Season 3 of Backpack Broadcasting's original web series that brings you the opinions of real sports fans. The first two seasons and current season are available now for viewing on the Sports Walk YouTube channel and Facebook page. Check out the 2017 NYC WebFest official selection and see what other sports fans have to say on the hottest issues in sports today. It's easy. Just take the Sports Walk. Couple more probably, and then we'll get out of here. Keep this tight. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this one. Let's go to baseball. This 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 one in baseball. I I hinted that we're gonna talk about this on Twitter a while back. So let's get to this one now. Uh, the New York Yankees mandated <laughs> that people <laughs> shave off their beard, and you know, because it's the Yankee way, and it's the way they've always done it, and. As a man with a beard, one, I'm highly offended. Two, I saw the I saw the Ken Griffey Jr. documentary where people uh, – and this is a totally different reason, but he said that he would never play for the Yankees. And it wasn't because of that. It was because of something else. And people didn't believe him. So I'm here to say also that if I were a good enough baseball player and that's the only team that offered me a contract and they said, Brian – you could only sign here if you had to shave your beard. I'm going to be like, I don't care that I'm a New Yorker. I'm going to retire and go do something else because I'm not playing for an organization that's going to make me shave my beard because it's not about the beard. And this is what people lose sight of when it comes to a lot of these sort of company rules and big mandates that are across the board to make people, you know, identify as one. And it's not about the name on the back. It's about the name on the front and all that bullshit. Right. And that's not to say that all of those things are collectively wrong, but it's the tone that it collectively sets for everybody else in the company. Because when you're talking about the Yankees, everyone has to shave their beard. They're doing that so that everybody could identify in the same way. And I think that that is bullshit. Not to say that the beard is, you know, an expression on its own. But what you're really saying is that nobody is special here. And I think that's totally dishonest when you're trading for guys like Giancarlo Stanton and he's not the same equivalent as somebody who you have in like your minor league system. It just doesn't work that way. Like not everyone was the same. We're talking about woes earlier and he probably gets suspended and we don't even know the particulars of that because he's woe. She's basically untouchable. If somebody else does that, that's not as valuable at ESPN. Yeah, they're probably going to get released for, you know, better or for worse or justifiably so or not. When you're talking about the Yankees, it's more of an identification thing because what you're saying is, to me, it's disrespectful that somebody can't play there unless they shave their fucking facial hair. That's dumb. That's super dumb. So here's the thing. Especially now in 2020 that, one, beards are popular, and two, like, everything that we're experiencing right now, like, no. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't treat employers across the board the same way. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, the, the pushback you'll get on that, I've seen it. I'm not, I don't agree with this in any way, is that, oh, well, it's the company, and they get to say what they got to do, and you got to follow the rules. Here's my issue with that. America, working, is, America is the big – everybody's individualistic in this country. Everybody's about express yourself, do your thing, unless it comes to within – this company line. And what happens is there is a, so I know people will tell me, oh, well, like white people on the plane for the Yankees have to go, go with this too. What it is, it's about a look, right? And have, and if you want everybody to look to the same, I think it's fair to ask the company why you want everybody to look the same. This is not the armed forces. It's fair to ask that even about the armed forces. I understand they want uniformity along with people in uniform. I get that to some degree, but I'm still not sure why. Like nobody's ever explained to me why that is. Does yeah, it make? Like, why, from, why can't I? Why can't I go to does, war with somebody with a mullet next to me? Like, what's I, the problem? I think <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. While I'm thinking about it, I understand that they're going to say it's probably rooted in the discipline that you need. I would use another word that I'm not going to use here uh, mm-hmm. around that discipline that pe- that people will use to have. So it's part of having that discipline, and and I think discipline is a good thing. So I don't want to be 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 wrong on that. You have to be disciplined to be great at certain things and certain crafts you do. But I don't think that within a team, within an organization, with a job, that there has to be uniformity. And I can't support this when black people, particularly black women in the industry that I work in, have been constantly told to 
not wear their natural hair or not be able to express their individuality due to their heritage, their culture, their natural state on the air. People have had to conform so long for this. So I dreads. do have a problem with this. Also dreads. Dreads. What, look at all the stories we've seen about dreads and braids in the office. Well, dreads, well, long hair, it's not just facial hair with the Yankees. That's something else that I think needs to be noted here. It is also about hair past the shoulder. So Andrew McCutcheon, who played for the Yankees a couple years ago, had to cut off his dreads. And he's now come out and speak, spoken against this and said that how his individuality uh, wasn't allowed to be happening. He didn't choose to play for the Yankees. He was right. traded to the Yankees. And when he had a chance to re-sign with the Yankees, now, I don't know whether they wanted him or back or not, he went to the Phillies, right, and was able to sign there where he could have grown his hair and done whatever he wanted. What I find interesting is that Brian's bringing up in this, and I agree with Brian for bringing this up in this Carry, carry On Tradition podcast, why has nobody really challenged this? What happens if some player, because I'm wondering, what happens if the player, and Brian makes a fantastic point that, Everybody on the team isn't treated the same. So why do we act to this notion that everybody on the team is the same or everybody at a job is the same? We know that somebody who's being paid more at a job, at any job, is going to have a different set of rules. And we all kind of accept that because of the value that said person brings to the job. So then why would you not, why could not Aaron, no, not Aaron Judge, Stanton is a good example, right? Or Garrett Cole now on the Yankees. If one of them said, yo, I'm growing my hair, I'm growing facial hair, what the Yankees going to do? That, exactly. What are you going to do? Goes, that goes to the point of like, yo, people need to understand these companies. Yes, they have power and influence and that kind of thing, but not as much as their top employees. Because if that's the case, like, and, and I'm, frankly, I'm a little disappointed that no one's really challenged it. In that I am way. too. Like Andrew McCutcheon got traded there, and I understand that he did cut off his dreads and played, and you know he loves baseball or whatever, and he had a chance to get a ring. So this is all like very serious stuff. But right. at the same time, it's like, yo, if Andrew McCutcheon, think about what would have happened if Andrew McCutcheon just decided, and I wish he did this now, if he just decided, no, I'm going to keep my dreads. First of all, if you know anything about dreads, growing them shits is a long process, all right? It's a lot of hard work that people don't understand. And I'm not the be all end all on that. I'm just saying, like, I know a lot of people who have experienced this and they tell me like, yo, I, look, I've grown out braids before. I know that process. That is not a, that is not an easy process at all, especially when you're Puerto Rican and your hair is like, you know, soft or whatever. It doesn't look right when it gets braided sometimes. Like, it's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, my hair is like weird. Um, oh, that picture you showed me. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Andrew, Andrew McCutcheon, like, I wonder what would have happened if he just sort of sat out and was like, yo, I'm not going to do this because they want me to cut my hair. Imagine. Imagine what could have happened there. And I, I, I actually would like it to be like, I, w I wish it was like a big, like Aaron Judge, right? If Aaron Judge turned around one day and is like, nah, I want to grow a beard. Fuck that. What are the Yankees going to do? What are they going to do? Trade him? Trade yeah. Him and get a lot yeah. See, I, see, see. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't see that happening. But it goes to another point that you make, which is I think this goes in the workplace, and this is something we're seeing now. And this also goes to sports. This is the time if ever. Question. We we have another podcast episode called Question Everything. Go listen to that. It's also the time to question everything, challenge everything as much as you can. Right. You should always be asking these questions at the least. There should be this why. You know, why can't I do this? You know, and it's not enough. You know, it's not enough. And I'm going to say this, and I say this all the time. This is not, people like to make this just a workplace thing. I believe in this as a parent. I've said this for a long time. So, you know, Simone, my daughter, is going to ask me questions about why this is going to happen or why should I do this or why should I do this. If I, If my answer is because I said so, that is a lazy, horrible job by me. And if your answer as a company is because we can because we said so. How lazy are you that you can't come up with a real answer to it? Because what that's telling me is you know that your order is full of nonsense. You know that. So, so don't do that. It's lazy and people people deserve answers. If you can't answer the question, shame on you. That 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 triggered me right there as 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 the son of Hispanic parents where that is quite frankly a, a Oh. A frequent a frequent thing in our household. Oh, oh let me right. say, let me let me say real quick. And, and it also explains to you a little uh -huh. bit more of why I am the way I am because I grew up a pretty you know rebellious kid because I never gotten the answers that I was sort of looking for when I would ask these questions and we would get into these arguments all the time. Right, but here's the thing that's also very culturally uh, similar to me 
uh, growing up in a Caribbean household. And I think it's the reason why I have such a strong stance in it and why I refuse to, do, to refuse to do it going forward. And I hope if you ever have kids one day or other people listening, if you have kids, I hope that you guys can empower yourselves to take that stance for your kid. If, if my daughter asks me something and I don't know the answer, I'm going to say I don't know. It's not shame on me to say and, I don't and, know. And tell her it's okay It's okay. you don't know. It's okay if you don't know. know everything. It's, it's not okay. It's not okay to not know when asked and then not go and seek the answers. That's yeah. not okay. Yeah. You should then try to find the answers out and help your kid and say, hey, we're going to try to figure this out together. I think the same thing can apply to companies, Brian. I think you can do that. It's important to challenge your companies on these things, whether it's around race, whether it's around what the company structure is, what it is around what the tradition is, why are we doing these traditions. Do, all traditions aren't bad, as we said at the top of this podcast. What we're questioning here is, even in the context of sports, is does this serve us in 2020? Does yeah. this matter now? Does this work for us now? Is do this fair? That, do certain things that we think unify us actually unify us? Right. And do we s- need to be asking these questions about why we're doing these certain things today. And the answer can't be, oh, because we have did this forever. Because yep. forever is not a good thing. For like, I mean, come on, look at where black people are now compared to where they were 50 years ago compared right. to the 50 years before that. Like they don't want forever. They want to make progress. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hispanics, right. same thing. We want to make progress. We don't want to go back to forever. We don't want things. People are saying like, yo, we want things to go back to normal. And we're kind of over here like, I mean, normal, like ugh, what's normal? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we want a new normal that is advantageous to us. And in doing that, we need to get the answers for why we do certain things. And we need to also tweak why we do certain things because just because it's tradition and we've always done it doesn't make a lot of sense. I think the, wor- I think the worst thing that you can say to anybody in this world when they ask you a question is because this is how we've always been doing it, right? Because what that shows me is you're not thinking ahead or forward or even you've not questioned in your mind that maybe we could be doing something better, different. The best things in the world is because of innovation, for people pushing forward, for people taking risks, for people saying that this doesn't have to be in this structured way, okay? You don't have to follow everything and do everything. You know, you made me think about something that I always, you know, I was kind of the same kind of kid. I won't call it rebellious, but I always questioned stuff and questioned teachers and and did these things. And I always, I, I tell this stuff now, people laugh, but it's true. I'll never forget, I remember one time, I was in the third or fourth grade, and I'm a pretty fast reader. I've always been a fast reader because I read a lot. And, you know, the teachers, you know, the teachers used to say, hey, read this paragraph or chapter or whatever. So I read this this chapter, and I I was in third grade, actually, I remember. And I read this chapter, and I finished the chapter before everybody in class. So the teacher's like, she sees me, I put my book down, and I'm like, you know, twiddling with a pencil or something because there's nothing else to do. And she's like, she's like, Dexter, uh, are you finished reading? I'm like, yeah. She was like, I'll pick up that book and read it again. And I was like, no, why? Because I already read it. Well, just just read it again. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Right? Pretty much was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So. <laughs> what were you, like eight, nine yeah, years old? Yeah, I was like old? eight, nine years old. So I didn't do it. And I could see the, te- the teacher's fuming. And the teacher in her mind is like, okay, I'm going to get him. I'm going to show him. I'm going to embarrass him in front of the whole class. So as soon as the time is up and everybody's supposed to be done reading, she then tries to hit me with a barrage of questions that she thinks is really slick to catch me and see if I slipped and missed something. Of course, you know, because I'm sharp, I didn't miss a damn thing. And she ended up looking l- looking quite foolish. And she tried to pull me after the class and say, just because you knew that then doesn't mean you shouldn't go back and reread stuff. And I'll never forget, because I remember I told my, my mom this. And my mom was like, you know, she went and talked to that teacher and was like, my son knows how to read quickly and comprehend quickly. Don't you dare ever embarrass him in front of the class for that. My, yeah, my mom didn't play that when it came to school. And I, and my mom empowered me to do that. Even though there's other things, Tom is a Caribbean parent. She said, because this is how we do it. But when it came to questioning authority or questioning the way things was done, she always taught me to question stuff. So sometimes she didn't like if I questioned her. But that's a whole different story. But right. there wasn't any question stuff. So that's always been in me. And I've always had an issue with this, as you have too, Brian, from a young age. And that doesn't make us rebels, man. I, let, let, let's let's take the word rebellion off yeah, of that, bro. Yeah. It doesn't make us rebels. It makes us, it makes us truth seekers. Yeah. That's what it makes us, right? Yeah. We're not rebellious. We're just truth seeking. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm trying to think of an example 
uh, of the story about that, but we'll we'll come back to it another time. All right. So so you because because they're they're definitely they're definitely a little uh, different. Let's say. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, 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 there, there's probably there's probably some other ones I could have brought up too, but I felt that was the one uh, that was most podcast appropriate and professional uh, for, for for this one. Yeah, because there's one – I'm not going to get into the particulars of it because we just need to get to your last one so that we could get out of yeah, here. Yeah, we'll get out of here. Time. But there, but there's one that like – because I went to a private high school um, <clears throat> only because I was an SSP kid. I couldn't afford it. Don't get it twisted. Um, if you know about the student sponsors program, shout out to them. Um, I was I got into like a heated argument with someone during a mass and – like, I wanted to fight him right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, no, why are we going to wait? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're here. Like, we're right. We're here right now. And he was like, oh, you know, don't want to do it in front of the church, whatever, whatever. And I was like, what up? Like, I'm not and I'm not an atheist or anything like that. But right. I was just like, oh, like, why we got to wait? You know what I'm saying? So but well, I don't see, remember the particulars of the story, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to. I'm not. You know, religion's always an interesting subject. And I got into a. Uh, it's someone I'm still friends with, but I got into an argument with them in college regarding uh, I, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell this really it's a really quick story uh girl i used to date we went to a she was friends with another girl um and we went to a gospel concert a concert that they were having at, at, at pit hey, and um it's fire yo yeah so we went to the gospel concert and um it's me and this girl i'm dating and she was kind of talking to my friend at the time and and we're still friends so it's not it's not a bad thing so we're still friends and so at a point in the gospel concert, they had um, a collection. Now, normally you can do a collection by take, taking a collection plate, passing it down the aisle. But what oh. this, I think I might have told you this story before, so you might know yeah, where this is yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, this, what happened. I think I've done this too, though. That's why. What I happened think. with this was they did this collection where what they did is they took it row by row. So if you imagine yourself in church, and I'm about six rows back and they had everybody come out the row and go to the front to put something in the collection. And they, I remember they said this, and I know people might push back on me for this. They said, if you don't want to put something in the collection box, you can just tap it. But I was like, i completely rejected this. And the reason I rejected it is because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because no, 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 listen to me. What they were doing is, they're trying to shame you into psycholo- into giving something to collection box because what happens is you now get to witness everybody who goes up and passes. And if somebody doesn't put something in the collection and they just tap it, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that person didn't give. So there's a whole psychological aspect as opposed to just putting the collection plate down, down and it's not so public because you can't really see whether somebody gave something in every row. So I decided... In protest of this, I decided to just sit in my row, and I didn't get up and go for it. And you know, when I came back, the girl I was dating was like, "Why did I do it?" And um, after my friend was like, he was very upset about the fact that I didn't do it. He found it extremely disrespectful, and I was like, "Well, I find it disrespectful that they have to use this kind of psychological tactic to try to get money out of people. I just don't think that that's right, and I wasn't supporting it, so I didn't go. I said, look, I came here, I supported money, I paid for this gospel concert to go to, whatever it was, five bucks or whatever. I gave some money. I understand the church wanted some more money or whatever organization was involved, but I just didn't think that was the way to do it, and I, and, and I didn't do it. And I remember, I'll never forget this, I remember asking my friend, why couldn't they just give the collection plate, or how do you not see, and it's funny, my friend, I believe his major was psychology. I kid you not. His major was psychology. And he could not see that this was a psychological play to get people to give more money. And mm-hmm. it turned into a heated argument. You know, me and him, we, we cool. And we were fine after that. But, like, I just didn't agree. And I think people, when there are certain spaces and certain groups and group thing can exist, and this can exist even in sports before we wrap this up, people don't like, when people won't like this episode. Because yeah. we're challenging systems that exist in, in things. So people won't like that. But I've always been a supporter of that. And I'm also not opposed to people like you, Brian, if you want to call it rebellious or taking a stand, you know, saying like, no, this, this, why am I doing this? I don't have to do this like everybody else. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't have change until some people are brave enough to say, no, we can do better. And yeah. sometimes that is not standing for an anthem. Sometimes that's not standing when they're trying to do the psychological thing with a collection 
at a, at a church and just saying like, yo, nah, this is wrong. Like everybody should be able to give in the privacy in the way they want to give. Um, and I still believe that to this day. That's not mean yeah. I'm anti-church or anything. I'm just anti trying to shame people into money. I ain't here for that. So yeah. that's it. All right, my last thing from sports. I got a lot to, to pick from, so I'm not sure before we wrap this up. Um, I think I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with this. I have a bunch I got to go. I'm going to go to baseball. Baseball has long been rooted in tradition. Brian and I have talked about the whole thing that we hate about – you know, not people can't style when they flip the bat after hitting the home run, but people want to be them. So we're not even getting to that. We know that's problematic, and we know there's a lot of racially charged stuff that's problematic in that. Mm-hmm. But um, I will mention these other two before I get into the baseball one. Some stuff around soccer. I love soccer. Limited substitution in soccer. Got to go. Time to start added some subs in soccer. Agree. Time stoppage in soccer. Why can't we just stop the clock? If somebody's injured, <laughs> could we just stop the clock? Instead of having a stoppage time at the end, somebody like why do we continue to, the clock going on in soccer? I don't understand it. Okay, don't get it all se- uh, of a second. I also don't necessarily like teams playing with a man down in soccer or hockey. You know what? Somebody gets injured, somebody gets a yellow card. Yeah, you get the sub. Okay, that would help with the whole thing of having more subs. But my thing with baseball, this goes to a safety thing. We've seen in the last couple of years a lot of uh, injuries in baseball where people have hit these screaming line drives, go into the stands, it's hit kids, it's messed up people's eyes, retinas, facial bone structure, everything. Yeah. There's safety that can be done to this. In Japan, they put up safety netting. In the States, only in a few stadiums have they extended the safety netting past in front of home plate, so going down the first and third base lines. In Japan, this is required in all stadiums. The netting goes all the way around. Some people say, oh, this changes my experience of being able to catch a foul ball. Is it really that great to catch a foul ball? Is it really that great? Like, <laughs> is it that amazing? Like, I've had some near close chances to catching a foul ball where I've been high up and it's been pretty safe. But you know what I don't want? To get hit in the face. You know what I don't want to do when we're able to come back and have sports safely? I don't want to have good seats to a Mets game and I'm sitting there with my daughter and have to worry about her getting hit in the face. That's yeah. not an enjoyable experience for anybody. The safety of the customers consuming the sport should be at its best. Okay? Now... I'm not saying they should put netting in the outfield. I think a fly ball coming to the outfield where you can see it from a pretty good distance and people needed to get out the way they could. But with exit velocities increasing, players becoming stronger, people throwing the balls harder, there's going to the be ball more. Getting juiced the ball also. being juiced. There's going to be more of a risk of people being hurt. Why there isn't a movement for just people to say, hey, this is what we need to do to be safe and just keep the fans safe at these games when we have this back. I don't understand it. HBO Sports did a real good thing, I think it was two years ago, on this, where they did a piece on how it's working in Japan, and people accept this. But again, this comes back to something we could tie into the times that we're in. Yeah. American individualism, people thinking that they have the rights to experience everything that they should without the concerns of others, and that's the problem here. It's all good to be at a baseball game and try to catch that foul ball that comes into the stands. It's all good till your kid gets hit in the eye with a 120-mile exit velocity ball rocketed at them then you'll be like i wish they had the net please baseball could we put up the nets down the first and third baselines in the stadium we don't need to see anybody reaching over the railings to catch a foul ball anymore we don't need that we don't even need to see the players going over the railings to catch a foul ball anymore if it hits the net it's a foul ball it's a wrap it's done that's it keeps the people safe now you don't have to worry about getting sued by people it just keeps everybody safe put the nets up I understand you played this way for 100 years, but players are getting stronger. Things are changing. Time to adjust with the game. And I'm sure that there were times back then that we don't know much about where people will get hit by foul balls. But because Word. it was like 1914, we just don't know about it. True. You know what I mean? Word. I'm sure that it happened a bunch of times even back then. So, yeah, I obviously agree. I think that we should we should just try to keep the customers as safe as possible. Like, we don't want their experience to potentially be their last one. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not football where, like, if a football goes into the stands, it's not being hit by something, so it's not coming at you at a certain velocity. It's like, nah. And that's real so rare, too. In basketball, it's not something you really have to worry about like that. Outside of being in one of the first few rows and, the you know, a player is, like, going after a loose ball or whatever, and they may jump onto you, that's kind of become part of the experience. 
Although I'm not really sure, like, you know, moving forward, is everyone going to have to put something up because of the virus? Like, we don't even know what that part is going to look like. And in hockey, man, you might have to, because we're still hearing stories about kids getting hit in the face with a puck and things like that. Maybe you have to even raise those walls, but I don't know. But basically, just overall, just try to make things safer. You know what I mean? It's kind of ironic that some of the safer things to go to are boxing and MMA fights because, like, it's just two people in the ring and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, if you go to the Barclays Center, it'll be a lot of weed. But outside of that, you know, in MMA, two people are locked in a cage, and the fans are not outside of, like, the Conor Khabib thing. Where people yeah, where well, he came out for that. <laughs> that is an outlier. I will speak on behalf of the MMA community. That is an outlier um, <laughs> in that situation. But, yeah, and, and frankly, he was going after another fighter, which is another part of that. Right, story, who, but. Who, who said some, who said mm-hmm. some things that uh... – I understood why he went after him. Speaking of, uh, UFC coverage jinx continues because Jorge Masvidal is one of the two cover athletes on UFC 4. He just lost uh, the day after we're recording this. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, well, let us know what you think. What other things in uh, sports tradition should we not carry on? Should we change? I think we've covered a lot of stuff. We hope that you carry on this tradition of listening to the A Hard to Tell podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us on any platform that you listen to, uh, whether it's Backpack Broadcast and YouTube channel, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever way you listen to us, continue to support us uh, via Patreon. And stay tuned for a lot more great content that we will have coming up over the next couple months as we get very, very close to sports returning and those that have already tried to return. We're going to have a lot to talk about. That's going to be really interesting. And if you want to know some of our thoughts, we, we highly recommend you go back and check our last episode uh, with Jane McManus, who spoke about that uh, in particular and why she thought sports should not probably return at this point now. But I, I think Brian and I are going to have a lot, plenty, plenty, plenty to talk about uh, regarding that. That's it for episode 137 of the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast for my man, Brian Fonseca. I'm Dexter Henry. Until next time, y'all. Peace.